Hi, could you uh, introduce yourself and tell us your story with uh, cannabis? Alisa, I would be more than delighted and I have to have the opportunity to say hello to my friends in Poland because I feel Thank that we have a family all over the world and it's such a pleasure to meet you setting a precedent in your beautiful country that I've never only been through it. I've never stopped to see that country, but I want to see it. My plight began in 1975 when a doctor said to me, if you don't start smoking cannabis, you are going to be blind. Now, since I was in my early 30s, I thought I knew everything and I thought that doctor had to be crazy. Why was he telling me to do drugs? Oh, mother, please get me a Manhattan. I need some cigarettes. I have to think about going on marijuana. I don't think I like this. I'm scared. Really? And she's saying, yes, and you'll have uh, hallucinations after you take that stuff. And I guess she read about acid and thought that was, and I knew nothing, so I could believe anyone. And the lies had started back in 1913 in this country because that was the first state that made marijuana illegal. But the crazy part of it is that is 101 years ago now. That means that we have been lying and misinforming people for six, we're starting the sixth generation. We don't deserve that. The planet needs to be restored. You cannot continue to cut down all those trees, to waste the enormous amount of paper we use all over when you can have it with hemp and you can replenish the whole country, the whole world with oxygen. I think that's why when you read your Bible, it tells you that the green leaf is there for the healing of the nations at the end of Revelation. It also tells you that the seed is there. The seeds of all seed bearing herbs are there for protein, for food, and it is the healthiest food on the planet. So, this doctor gives me a ticket on a crazy roller coaster ride when he tells me I have to smoke so marijuana. Table and it's all these well, just I tried it, and it, much to my shock, it was, was incredibly oh, it's, well. It's, it's, it worked for my glaucoma. Yeah, I had been born with congenital cataracts, so I had surgeries as a child. But 20 years after that, I was living a perfectly normal life with some contact lenses. I had two children, was working at the bank. You know, it was but the glaucoma was out of control, nothing would help except marijuana, and nobody would let me use it. So I had to change my life completely once I wasn't working anymore. I don't know how much time I'll have. In the 80s, there was a crazy lady here that had a the powder nose, you know, and she was telling everybody here to just say no. And they started testing people, they couldn't get a job unless they threw away their constitutional right to privacy and beat in a yard for, to get any job. And so I didn't look for work anymore because I left the bank after my second or third surgery. I couldn't see enough to keep that job. So that was a nightmare for me. But what was even worse than what was going on with my eyes was the lies and misinformation that kept making, allowing me to make irrational decisions, really like I allowed them to cut right and cut and, and cut till I was left totally bullshit. blind over a period of years. By then, all my friends were and different friends, people who grew marijuana or that did that. Same ratio any other I, had to, I had to find them, because since we all lie to everybody, yeah. you know nobody I mean? knows just who does and who doesn't. Or or we, we I'm doing an interview, honey. And it's criminal to make people wait. A thousand patients on the wait list while they're having seizures. Yeah. Audrey, I will make interviews you with you too. Okay. <laughs> no, this is part of the whole marketing thing that I find, that I find really I mean, important. we're trying to record something yeah. right now. And if we're out of so something, we can have it a little less. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, they're not there. <laughs> no. No fucking but no anyway, that when I, uh, after that, I lost the eyes when I was arrested and I definitely really bought it. it. But I had been going to an eye institute, one of the best eye institutes in the world. I'm sure many doctors from Paul and have trained at the Miami, at the University of Miami, is now known as the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. And uh, the good part of all, all those years that I was using the marijuana is that all the intern doctors were asked to see me before I saw whoever, whichever doctor I would see. And of course, they knew I would tell my story to anyone that would listen. 
did, so I did get to educate quite a few doctors from the very beginning. And we get the records, so, and when I did have to go to court, well, I got So what did you say to doctors to convince them that this is something what really helping you, easy, like nothing else? Easy. They had my records to show what happened to me if I had no marijuana. But they also, I came in and I would say, well, today my pressure should be okay because I found something very good that I smoked. They didn't want to hear it. But I said, yeah, and sure enough, they check and I was right. I was right. Oh, I come with a long face. Well, Today, my neighbors stole the plants. I can't call the police because it's illegal. They're laughing at me. I'm not. I'm not seeing. I don't. I'm having a bad day. Pressures up. Stress exacerbates any and all illnesses. Stress is the biggest killer in the world. We got serious medical problems, and to put a patient to the hell of worrying about how long they're going to keep their children, their jobs, their homes, their kids for what? <laughs> Poor plant that's never killed anyone. I need some water. There is my water over here somewhere. Where is the water? Oh, here. There is the water. But 